Hello everyone, my name is Yus Yusuf. I am a consultant rheumatologist uh, from Leeds, United Kingdom. I'm reporting for Room Now uh, at uh, the 2024 EULA Congress Vienna. Today, uh, I would like uh, to uh, talk and summarize about an oral presentation that I uh, delivered uh, myself. Uh, and this, uh, the abstract number is uh, OP0076. Uh, so as we all uh, know, uh, the randomized controlled trials uh, in uh, Sjogren's uh, disease aim to alleviate uh, glandular symptoms, pain and fatigue. However, uh, both uh, phase uh, three trials failed to meet their primary endpoints. However, some uh, ob objective measures such as unstimulated flow salivary rate uh, and uh, echo structure of um, ultrasound of salivary glands showed improvement with rituximab therapy. So what we learned from uh, these uh, failed clinical trials uh, were that one, we needed to improve uh, about the outcome measures that were more uh, sensitive to capture the clinical and biological response. Uh, secondly, um, we need to also focus on the systemic features uh, because both clinical trials, the tiers in France and also the practice in the UK, uh, look into uh, addressing uh, this high symptoms burden. Uh, and the uh, uh, mean SDI score in the practice, for example, uh, was five. Uh, and then the thirdly uh, was a lack of patient stratification. Also, uh, what is not known in the field uh, is that uh, there are limited data for childhood onset uh, Sjogren's disease and also the outcome of a uh, repeated rituximab cycle. So um, the objective of uh, this uh, study um, was uh, to uh, evaluate uh, the outcomes uh, of rituximab um, in children responders and also non-responders using a whole life course approach from children to adolescent and uh, adults. So we did a, a retrospective um, observational studies uh, of uh, over 70, uh, so 76 patients uh, across seven UK centers. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, the endpoint, uh, the primary endpoint was a reduction in S dice score equals to or less than three uh, points. Uh, but we also recorded uh, the glucocorticoid and also the uh, uh, physician's intention uh, to treat with rituximab. Um, so um, in this uh, multi-center cohort study, um, of uh, 76 uh, uh, patient in terms of the baseline characteristic, they were, had more severe uh, disease activity. Uh, the mean SDA score uh, was uh, nearly 14 uh, and over 44% patient had severe SDA score, um, which is uh, defined as SDA uh, equals to or more than 14. Uh, and two thirds of the patients uh, received concomitant immunosuppressants with rituximab. Um, so of uh, these 70, 76 patients, uh, we had uh, six months data for 73 patients. Uh, in cycle one, uh, we showed good SDI response for which 80% for which 80 responded. Uh, and um, the main uh, domains, uh, the top six domains uh, uh, were uh, that responded to rituximab, including uh, the glandula, uh, the hematological, uh, and also the, the, the nervous system. Uh, yeah, so these, these are, uh, and also lymphadenopathy as well. Um, so what happened to these patients? So some of them, uh, majority of them receive a cycle two or rituximab infusion. Uh, however, in this cycle two, uh, uh, we we saw we saw a dropout in the response rate from eighty percent cycle one to now seventy three percent, and um, uh, uh, when we look at the reason for this drop, uh, this this drop uh, was because um, patient uh, developed symptoms suggestive of anti drug antibodies. So what happened? Uh, this occurred uh, in the second infusion uh, of the two sets of infusion of rituximab. Uh, patient uh, had a 
severe infusion reaction lasted for more than 24 hours uh, and they could not complete the infusion. And when we checked the B cell, uh, the B cell did not deplete whatsoever. Uh, and previously our study showed that this was associated uh, with anti-drug, anti-rituximab anti uh, antibodies. Um, yeah, so, uh, and what happened uh, to those who did not respond uh, in the first cycle, um, what we found that um, uh, we did retreat uh, a few of these patients uh, and only one third of the patient responded. Uh, and this in contrast uh, with data from rheumatoid arthritis, uh, where previous studies showed that uh, if you do not respond in the first cycle, and particularly if you uh, do not uh, have uh, incomplete depletion, uh, after the rituximab, if you give another one that can improve uh, the response. So um, in, in conclusion, um, in summary, um, we showed uh, that uh, the good um, uh, uh, outcomes uh, of repeated cycles uh, at five years, uh, the retention rate uh, was uh, 67%. So two thirds of the patients remained on rituximab. So this is quite good. Uh, for five-year retention. Uh, however, uh, we acknowledge that, um, uh, that in one in six patients uh, might have a risk to develop this anti-drug or anti-rituximab antibodies. So uh, in terms of strategy, what can we do uh, to overcome this? So hopefully um, uh, in the future, uh, we will have a better B-cell depleting therapies in the outset. Um, uh, in order to overcome this, for example, uh, the use of uh, humanized anti-CD20 monoclonal antibodies or a novel uh, type 2 anti-CD20 monoclonal antibodies uh, like as um, like um, uh, obinutuzumab or other mechanism uh, to improve like B-cell killing such as like plasma cell depletion, for example, or dual uh, blockade inhibition, you know, for example, using ionolumab, uh, which can do both properties of inhibiting B cell survival factors or end depletion, uh, with hopefully this uh, can lead to sustained clinical response. Um, so I hope um, you found uh, the uh, uh, summary uh, useful. Uh, please uh, follow me and also Room Now uh, in a social media outlet, including Twitter and YouTube uh, and etc. for more coverage of uh, EULA Congress. Goodbye.